Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at it before. But Paul had a plan. Uh, whenever Paul had this idea, he it is it, it you and I, it's not a vacation, certainly it was not a vacation for Paul, but it would be like you and I planning to go on a vacation, or maybe we we were planning a missionary trip. And Paul had a plan of what he was going to get, uh, do and where he wanted to go to share the gospel and to uh, preach the gospel. How many of you remember uh, here just a couple weeks ago when Paul said that he, there was no more room uh, for him to minister in those parts? He had done his complete work. He had done everything that God called him to do. My soul, would it, wouldn't it be nice to be able to say that of ourselves? I, 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 I've got to move on now. Because I've done everything that God has called me to do. Well, Paul could say that. And I believe it was true. God allowed uh, it to be written in the Word of God. I believe it was the truth uh, uh, that he shared, uh, that he had a plan. And the Bible said here in verse 22, For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now having no more place in these parts and having a great desire these many years uh, to come to you. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, uh, for I trust to see you in my journey and be brought on my way thitherward by you if I first be somewhat filled with your company. Now, Paul was looking forward to going to, and to see the believers at the church at Rome. Remember, uh, he's writing here from the church at Corinth, which is over near Ephesus and all that area there. He's writing to them at the church. At, uh, he's writing to the church at Rome. He doesn't know these people. Uh, he knows of some of them, uh, but he's, he didn't actually go and step foot uh, there in Rome and start that church. There were some believers that he knew there. He was writing to them. I, I, I was listening to somebody talking about this, and he said, uh, that he was basically writing a missionary letter uh, to the church there uh, and, and telling them uh, that I want to come, as I've worked out of Antioch, I want to come down and I want to work out of Rome. I'm going to go into Spain and into other parts of the world uh, where Christ is not named. He had a plan to do all that, but how many of you know sometimes our plans are not always God's plans? Our plans are not always what God wants for our life. I've told you this many times before, but I'll tell you once again. I thought I was going to the Pacific Northwest. I thought I was going to go up there and be a missionary and plant churches and pioneer churches. I still have a heart for that area, but Brother Ronnie, God did not call me there. God called me here. And some of you think, well, I wish he'd do something else. And I say, well, hallelujah, amen. I'm here just as long as God lets me be here, amen. Some preacher said it like this, it's easier to move your letter than it is for me to move my furniture. <laughs> hallelujah, it goes right there. Uh, Paul's plan. Now, let, let's look and get into the depth of this, talking about Paul's purpose. Look in verse 25. But now... I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. I want to go to Spain. I want to stop by Rome. But now I go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. How many of you know uh, that Paul is called the, uh, the apostle to the who? To the Gentiles. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Who lives in Jerusalem? The Jews. Paul is going to a place he did not necessarily want to go. To people that he was not necessarily called to minister to. Because he was bound in the spirit to do it. Sometimes God will have you go places. And be good to people that you might not have, like a whole lot. I just let's just be honest. Let's, I mean, we live in 2020. Let's just be honest where we are. Uh, there's some people that you and I just don't like a whole lot. I mean, we gotta love them to go to heaven, but we don't. Uh, 
we don't like them a whole lot. I, you know, Brother Glenn, we say that a lot, but I find it's hard for me to love somebody that I don't like. It's hard for me to love somebody if I can't, if I can't pray for them. If I can't pray for the blessings of God, I can't pray uh, for the good things of God to be on their life. Uh, it's hard for me to love them. Be careful when that old spirit of bitterness rises up in us. That old spirit of hurt feelings and everything else. And I, I, you see them going one way and you dodge because you don't want to see them. You don't want to talk to them. Now, I know there's some people that if you run into them in the grocery store aisle, they're going to tell you about every health issue they've had from their bunion on their foot to all kinds of things that ought not be talked about in grocery store aisles. I understand there's people like that, and you might want to slip down the next aisle just to not keep from them from embarrassing themselves and you getting embarrassed with them. Amen. But we ought not have a person or people in our life that we are at, at, at enmity against, that we have an alt with them. One thing I've learned in trying to live for God is there are times that things that will go wrong. Uh, I doubt this would ever happen. But maybe one day, uh, me and Brother Glenn, I mean, we just get on, on at odds with each other. And, uh, and it, it just comes to the place where we don't really talk to each other. Number one, during that time in our life, we're not going to be right with God when we're wrong. <laughs> but there's going to come a time that the Holy Spirit's going to keep on working on me and working on him because I believe Glenn's saved and I know I'm saved. I believe that it, the Holy Spirit will talk to us and there comes a time you've got to make a decision. Am I going to get this thing right? Now, you know it's just as well as I do, there's some people that don't want to get it right. You can do everything you can do on your side and so you just have to leave it in the hands of God. Amen. You cannot make them forgive you. You cannot make them get over it, get past it. You can't. But you can do everything you should do. And we should do that in our life. There should come a time in our life that we have done everything we can do to fix a situation. And, and, and it comes to a place where if you see them at the Walmart, you can wave your hand at them. You can go try to speak to them. It might be them that dodges from you, but you ought not be from dodging from them. Amen. Amen. I don't even know where, how I got there. But now I go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased them in Macedonia and Kai to make a certain contribution to the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Now look at verse number 27. And it hath pleased them verily in their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in the carnal things. I, I real briefly try to, try to help you through this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, also, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter number 9, Paul writes there to the church at Corinth and talking about uh, giving an offering uh, to be a help and be a blessing to others. They were taking up a, an offering for those that were struggling uh, there at Jerusalem, and Paul uh, was going to take that to them. On Acts chapter 11, I'll read this. Uh, uh, from my notes here. Acts 11 verse 28 said, There stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt at, in Judea, uh, which also they did and sent it by the elders uh, by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. There was a famine uh, in Judea between four, uh, 44 and 48 AD. Uh, this may be uh, part of the reason uh, that, they, that this offering was taken. Uh, they were very poor. How many of you know if you don't have a whole lot of money, you usually don't have a whole lot to set back uh, to get you through a rainy day? Uh, sometimes uh, we, we forget where we came from. 
Sometimes we look at people and think, well, I don't know why they couldn't pay their bills. Because they was doing, they were doing everything they could do to pay their bills, and then something happened. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Paul now takes this offering to those that are in Jerusalem. He had a heart for those that were struggling. He had a heart for those that were poor. He could have sent the offering by someone else, but he takes it himself at tremendous cost. People warned him not to go. He knew he'd be persecuted, probably would end up in prison, and he was for two years. Listen to this, Acts 21. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus, same guy. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean you to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready uh, not to be bound only, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he, we would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of God be done. Later on in that very chapter, we find where Paul is taken and arrested. And of course, Remember, Paul's heart was to go to Spain. Paul's heart was to stop by Rome. But Paul knew that he was bound in the spirit to go to Jerusalem. Little did he know that God would use that very trip to Jerusalem to end him up in the ivory palaces before Caesar himself. How many of you know God knows how to put things together a whole lot better than we do? God knows exactly what he's doing. God's working it all out, putting it all together. So we look at the a purpose that he had. It was to minister. It was a purpose of grace. He wanted to be a blessing to those that were a help to him when he first got started. Even when he first got saved, they did not embrace him right away. I can't say that I blame him. He was Saul back then, and he was known for killing Christians. And uh, he, they questioned his motives. But he felt an obligation to be a blessing to them. What a lesson for you and I. There's some people that we ought to make a phone call to, we ought to visit, we ought to reach out to in our life that back when we first got it started in this thing of living for God, uh, uh, they were with us, they helped us, they encouraged us along the way. Uh, it, it sh we should, uh, as God's people, remember those that were involved uh, in our growth, uh, in our experience. I've reached out to people in my own life. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've talked to people that have helped me along the way. Uh, I've tried to, uh, to be an encouragement to them. There's been a, a time or two my wife makes fun of me because I'll, uh, I, I, I'll just call somebody out of the blue. I'll text them out of the blue. I'll contact them out of the blue. I mean, I haven't talked to them in years, and I'll just call them up and tell them, hey, I just want you to know that God had you on my heart. I, and there ought to be some people in your life that every once in a while you just call them and tell them, hey, I just want you to know I love you, and I want you to know what you did back there, I, that it meant a whole lot to me, uh, and you might not see uh, a whole lot of fruit in it back then, uh, but I can tell you right now that God was using you, uh, and God blessed my life through your life. Somebody say amen. Right there. Uh, have, have we called anybody to thank them for praying for us? To thank them for being good to us? We, uh, he had a purpose in grace. He had a purpose in giving. Now, the, uh, the churches that Paul has ministered to, the Gentiles, one of the things that the Jewish church believed about the Gentile church is that they were of the world they loved the world. They loved money. They loved the world system. They loved all that. So God put it on their heart to give to the church at Jerusalem so that they would see, man, they're just like us. They are not everything we thought and we heard they were. 
They're like us. They care about us. God put a love uh, for us down in their heart. Uh, wow, think about this. Look all around this world. Most of the world in their worship services, in their opportunities to gather together, they worship in abject poverty. We had a missionary come, and I believe he was going to the Philippines, but it, I, I could be mistaken. It was an area over there uh, similar to that. And he had a video of how they had to walk on this path to get to this church. And there were if you didn't walk in certain places, you'd be walking in sewage and things like that. There were certain steps that they had to take just to get to this church. When they got to the church, all it was was a large opening, had some, some plastic chairs, uh, and that's just about it. And they would, he, he, I think he had a video of them singing. Uh, just singing the praises of God. I wonder, what if God took away the stained glass windows? What if God took away the chandeliers? What if God took away the padded pews and the sound system and all of it? Could we still worship? Would we still worship? Because he's a God that deserves our worship and our praise uh, regardless of all this, uh, with all this, uh, or without all this. Uh, he is God all by himself. Uh, he is God uh, and he is good. Now, having said that, we live in a land where we are blessed. Most of us had too much to eat, have leftovers to go back to, We've got a bed to sleep in. If we don't like that one and the wife gets mad at us, we can sleep in another bed. We've got cars to drive. We've got as much as we want and to spare. And we often neglect our giving toward God. One of the things that the Lord's been speaking to me about is this, and uh, here over the next few months we'll talk about this and make it where it's uh, uh, in detail and all that. But we, what, what my goal is to see us do as a church is whatever we take in every week or a month, every hour, the easier way to do it, is to give 10% of that back to God through our missions program. They're trying to reach other people. We've, all, we've been strapped down with this building payment for all these years. Now God has made a way for us. We're going to do something. And we're going to reach missionaries. We're going to help get the gospel out as much as we can, as fast as we can, to as many as we can. Somebody say amen right there. Let's do our part. These baby Christians are wanting to know what... Uh, be part of what God is doing. They wanted to be a blessing to others. Some of them, in fact, maybe many of them, would never preach. They'd never teach. They'd never sing a song. They'd never travel very far from their own town. But the, what they could do, we can do, is give. There's some of you that may not have the ability to stand and teach. You not, might not feel like you can sing. The Bible said, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If you've ever heard me sing, you'd know that's true. It's a noise unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, but you might not be able to preach. You might not be able to teach. You might not be able to sing. Uh, you may be able to never go on a mission trip. Uh, but what you can do uh, is fund those that do. Uh, you can send those that will. And uh, you can help those uh, to do your, their part. Uh, and you and on your end uh, will do your part. Uh, and God can get the glory. Amen. Amen. Let me just pause right here. Talking about giving. It still takes money to run a ministry. To do what we do costs money and takes money. I don't think I have to preach a whole lot on that, but I, I would encourage you, I would challenge you, if you're not giving, it's time to start giving. Amen. Amen. Uh, if, you, if you are giving, maybe you just pray and say, God, what else can I do? 
What more should I do? The purpose of giving, the purpose of grace, the pur purpose of gratitude. The Gentiles gave of their material wealth. Look at this in verse uh, 27. It hath pleased them verily. And their debtors they are, for the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things. Their duty is also to minister to them under them in carnal things. If you've received a blessing, a spiritual blessing from a ministry, you owe that ministry a material blessing. Ooh, we don't like that, do we? Now, some people, you know, they can they get with that. If I come to church, I'll, I'll drop a little couple dollars in the offering. If I don't come to church, then I don't owe God nothing. I didn't use his air conditioning. I didn't use his bill. <laughs> My brother's back there saying, right, right. Well, you're wrong, friend. You're wrong. <laughs> um, he's, he's joking when he says that. Uh, God deserves our best, our first and our best, regardless. And I don't need to preach this. During uh, the corona and all that stuff, we were able to do some uh, uh, parking lot stuff. But the, the thing that amazed me, Miss Midge, is our giving actually increased during all that. And I thought for sure, man, if they can't come inside and, you know, do things like we always done, maybe they won't give. But hallelujah. Thanks be to God for some people that love God, put him first in their life and say, you know what? I'm going to trust God. Yeah, that's all right. You can go ahead and give him some praise because he's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we might be picking up them missionaries quicker than uh, Amen. I heard about this little boy, him and his daddy. Uh, they went to church, and uh, they didn't go to church very much at all. But him and his daddy had, had been invited to church, and, and they went. And uh, he watched as the offering plate went by. His daddy pulled out his wallet, and uh, he didn't go to the back of the wallet where the big bills were. He went up front, up front, up front, all the way to Mr. Washington. Pulled out a $1 bill and threw it down in the plate. He watched it. And uh, after church, they got in the car and they was on their way, way home. The daddy started complaining. He said, man, I didn't like that church. I didn't like their music. I thought it was too loud. It was boring. I, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. The preacher preached too long. He was boring too. And the air conditioning, I, it was too hot. It was too cold. I, I didn't like much of anything about it. Little boy looked at his daddy and said, well, I thought it was a pretty good show for a dollar. <laughs> Paul's purpose and Paul's power. Here's the last one. Verse 28. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. And I am sure that when I come uh, unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Uh, now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me. Uh, there we are. That you strive together with me uh, in your prayers to God for me. Now, Paul had to go a lot of a lot of places, and he didn't do it like we did do it now. He didn't have a car to jump into. He didn't, certainly didn't have a plane to get into. He would get on boats uh, that may sink and did sink. Uh, he would walk a lot. Uh, there was a lot of places he went, but he said that he was going to the uttermost part of the world. He was going as far as he could. Paul had a mission in mind when he thought about that. Paul, Paul's power. He was powered by God to fulfill this mission. One thing that uh, I talk to people about sometimes, they'll come, preacher, I'm burning. Preacher, I just can't do this anymore. And I understand that we can get that way. But I'll, I'll try to help you with something. If you'll let the God of heaven fill you with his power. If you'll let the God of heaven, the Bible said this in Philippians 2, verse number 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. If we'll have the mind of God about us, if we'll have the burden 
that God wants in our life, I promise you this. There are going to be times you get tired, but they, but you won't quit. The Bible said this in Galatians 6 and verse number 9. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. He didn't say that you wouldn't get weary, uh, but if you'll keep on going for the glory of God, I promise you this, God will give you blessing uh, on top of blessing uh, on top of blessing. How did Paul do it? Uh, Paul had a burden in his heart. Uh, Paul had a call uh, on his life. Uh, uh, Paul was consumed uh, with the idea of fulfilling what God had called him and commissioned him to do. Now the question is, what about us? What consumes us? What pushes us? What fills us? Well, preacher, I just can't hardly come to church on a Sunday morning. I'm so tired. Why are you tired? Well, I was up to about 2 o'clock in the morning. This movie was on in it. I just had to see it before it went off. If we fill ourselves up with all that stuff all week long, I promise you, you're not going to be filled with the Spirit of God. But we think we can fill ourselves up with everything else. When it comes time to come to church, then everything's going to be all right. We think like Samson. I'll just shake myself as at other times, and everything will be like it was. And he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. We have a privilege to be involved with people in prayer. Paul said, I beseech you, I'm begging you to come alongside of me in prayer, that you strive together with me in your prayers. Now, Paul is a man that wrote 14, I believe, 14 books of the New Testament. Hebrews, no one knows, but I certainly believe it was probably Paul. Um, 14 books of the New Testament. Uh, he saw people raised back to life again. He himself, they thought and took him up for dead, came back to life, saw things no man could see, all of that happened to him, and still Paul begged, still Paul pleaded, still Paul asked, I need when you pray, don't forget me. When you pray, I want you to call out my name. Some of us have gotten so independent in this thing of trying to live for God. We don't think we need God's help. We don't think we need God's people's help. I tell you right now, you need the prayers of God's people, and I need the prayers of God's people. We need the power of God in our life and on our life and around us. He wanted God's people to go to battle with him in this thing of prayer. When we pray alongside of those that are out serving, we have part in their ministry. There's been many opportunities that I've uh, been given to see people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Some have been right here in these altars. Some have sat in the pew just like you're sitting in and prayed sincerely in their heart and called out on God. There's been others that I've been out in the uh, hospitality room not too long ago, back during all this corona stuff, had someone contact me under conviction. And uh, I, it was a friend of theirs that had been talking to them and witnessing to them. They wanted to talk to the preacher. And so we met over here on the front porch uh, there and began to witness and began to talk to them. And that, that lady bowed her head and accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, and the reason that our, I'm blessed, I'll say this, I'm blessed to get to see that happen is because there are a whole lot of other people that are involved in the work of the ministry. Now, Whenever, for example, some of the ones that I've led to the Lord in the hospitality room, there were people that were in there praying that were working that day on hospitality. They had 
spoke to them. They showed them care and concern. There were other people in church that worshipped the God of heaven. You know, the Bible still says this, Jesus speaking, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto myself. There were some people that sang in the choir that day. There were some people that sat in the pews that day and worshipped and lifted up and exalted the name that is above every name. I don't know the message I preached. I don't know what I had to say, but I do know this. The God of heaven, the God of glory, the Holy Spirit was working in their life and he was using all kinds of people to get the job done. Can I tell you this? They ain't no business like God's business. I want to be involved in what God's doing. <clears throat> I'm almost uh, done. And all God's people said, Amen. Uh, Kelly, you come up, if you will. He had a motive to these things. There was a ministry in all of this. He said, I, I'm begging you and beseech you to come alongside me. When you go to pray, how can I pray? What should I pray for? Here's, here's a couple uh, keys that may help us. Paul's, he prayed that his walk might be protected. Paul knew there were people that wanted to kill him, that wanted to bring harm on him. He knew Satan was against him. When you go to pray for somebody, pray that God will protect them as they walk, as they minister. Man, it's, it, it is a sad day that we're living in. I mean, it's weekly that you hear about people that are involved in ministry that take a fall. And Miss Carolyn, as a young minister, as a young, young preacher, I used to think, well, they're just stupid. I know I'm not you're supposed to use that word. Well, who do they, why did they get into that? Then I, as I've learned and as I've grown and as, as I've aged, I've got to see there's a lot of people that got hooked up in something that they didn't think they was going to get hooked up in. And Satan got a hold of them. And so I've learned as a, now a little bit seasoned that I try to show people mercy and show people grace. It could have and probably should have been me. Some people say, well, I never use this one and I never go listen to that one. I never. Just because you fall down don't mean that God's done with you. God can hallelujah. God can pick you up, wash you off, make you just as good as you've ever been before, but you've got to come to him. Paul, he said, if you're going to pray for me, pray and help me that my walk will be protected, that the work may prosper. You know, we get involved in the things of God and I hope that you're involved for one reason that what he's doing may prosper there's some people that think well if I can't if I'm not the star if they don't call on me then I just won't I'd say this as, as kindly as I can but we don't need you and God don't need you either God didn't need me. He didn't need anybody. He chooses to use us. We've got to come to the place that we say, God, not my will, but thine be done. But, and then finally, that God's will might prevail. Remember, Paul wanted to go where? He wanted to go to Spain. I will come and stop by Rome. But first, I've got to take this offering down to Jerusalem for two years. He's hung up in that system down there before he finally gets to Rome. But God was putting all the pieces together. I want you to stand with me all over the building. I wonder tonight as we 
give some of these missionary prayer slips out. I wonder how many of us to come and take and come alongside of a missionary and just say, God, I think these are going to be clumped up so you don't have to come grab them, all right? How many of us come grab one of these prayer slips, one, a prayer reminder? How many of you would pray for Jesse Haley? Maybe you pray for John Tangu, for Jean Gonte. Oh, God, will you help them? Joshua Manasu, help them. These others, come and get a slip. Be sure to grab one. There's probably enough for you. Grab two if you want. Let's go to war on their behalf. Maybe right now they're facing something that they had put in a prayer letter. They had sent an email about, but God knows about. Kim Brayfield in Brazil. All these missionaries that God's been so faithful to link up with them in your prayers. Pray for you, church. Pray for those that are over you, those that are around you and surround you, that God would help them. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, help us to minister to the saints. Help us to be faithful in ministering to the, those that you've chosen to use those that you've chosen, that you've called, oh God, do what only you can in our lives. Help us. I thank you, God, for all you've done. Lord, all you will do. God, help us, touch us, bless us, Lord, tonight. We love you. We thank you. Oh God, burden our heart to do more. God, help us to see the need where we're at. Lord, I thank you, God, for missionaries who call it to Africa and to China. But God, there's some people right here in North Carolina, Gaston County, that need to be reached with the gospel. God, help us to be faithful to do just exactly that. Oh, God, help us, Lord. I pray, God, for every missionary that we have been partnering with over the years. Jason Christensen in Egypt, having to hide underneath a pseudonym for the safety of his family. God, I pray you'd use him to reach Muslims and the Arab world for Christ. I ask you, God, that you touch Brian McLean in Thailand. Oh, God, help him to make a difference where he's at. Help him, God, as they reach into other parts there in, in Asia. God, to make a difference. God, there's so much, so many that are doing what you've called them to do. I ask you, God, please, please help them. God, may you wake us up in the night. May you stir us in our day. And God, put a burden on our heart about those that are serving. God, as you open up other doors for us to take on new missionaries, God, I pray you'd guide us, Lord, as we do that. We love you. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus, for letting us be a part of who you are and what you do. With heads bowed and eyes closed, we prayed about a lot of things. Maybe tonight you're here and you're struggling in some areas of your life and you need 
the help of God. You need the power of God in your life. I wonder if we'd just be honest enough to say, Preacher, I'm struggling. I'm just about to go under. Would you help me pray? Who, who, is there anybody in here like that? Throw your hand up. We see those. Is there others? Here's my hand, preacher. I won't come to you, call you out, embarrass you, but I'll pray for you. Thank you. We see those. Is there somebody else? Here's my hand, preacher. Would you pray for me? God, you know my heart. You're here tonight and say, preacher, I, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved. I do not know that I'm ready to meet Christ just like I am. Maybe just slip your hand up and put it right back down. I'd love to pray for you. Is there somebody like that? Preacher, would you pray for me? I don't know for sure. Here's my hand. I won't embarrass you and call you out, but I'll sure pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, you know our hearts. Lord, you know the hands that were raised and those that wanted to raise them. Oh, God, I ask you right now, would you just do what you do? Holy Spirit, go to them, draw them, convict them. God, do a work in their heart, a work in their life. I thank you, God, for all you've done, all you will do. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Well, thank you for coming uh, coming out to church tonight. And we appreciate uh, those of you that have uh, come this way. Um, we look forward to being here on Sunday. All right. Lord willing, I will continue uh, our uh, prophecy uh, series on Sunday. We'll be looking at uh, end time events and the countries and the people that will be involved uh, and are involved. How many of y'all saw on the news where the first uh, airline uh flight from Jerusalem to the United Arab Emirates happened this past week. Uh, Jared Kushner was on there, and I'm not going to call him the Antichrist or, or Trump uh, the Antichrist or anything like that, uh, but, I, but the Bible says this, God sits down one and sets up another one. He puts it all together. He puts the pieces into place. And we'll, we'll look at that, some of that over the, uh, this, this Sunday and possibly next. All right? Pray for me as uh, we try to prepare that and put it into a way that will be a help to you and uh, uh, easy to understand for all of us. Okay? Um, thank you again for coming. And um, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's have a, a stand uh, real quick as we're getting ready to be dismissed. Uh, if you will, uh, Jacob, can you uh, grab those plates and just hang, hang out by the door right there uh, for us? I appreciate that. Uh, let's have a word of prayer as we're dismissed. Ask my brother, if he will, uh, to pray for us. Jason Dawson. Thank you, Lord, Brother Jason, in your house, God. I pray you take his missionaries, Lord, and put them on our hearts, Lord. Help us remember to pray for them and that work that they're out doing, Lord. I pray you help each and every one of us be a missionary, Lord, before you put us in our life, God. I pray, Lord, for that one that needs a fresh touch, God, I want to have a special request. I pray, God, that you can answer.